everybody be seated, please. Um, welcome. What you see? Just a second, Mr. Bubbun. Yeah, make just a comment. Uh, I know we need to swear you. Good morning. Thank y'all for being back here this morning. I hope everybody had a nice weekend. Um, anybody experienced any problems that we need to discuss with you? Anybody? No. All right. Uh, if you'd place the clerk and be sworn, please. Have a seat, please. Let me slide up the microphone. You may proceed. Sir, please introduce yourself and spell your name. My name is Thomas Balboni. That's spelled B A L B O N I. How are you employed, Mr. Balboni? I'm employed in the Criminal Investigation Unit for the Office of the State Attorney uh, and in for the Second Judicial Circuit of Florida. How long have you been so employed? Over 20 years now. And what are your duties at the State Attorney's Office? I provide investigative and logistic support uh, to the Assistant State Attorneys in a variety of ways. <clears throat> Right. And does that include fingerprint comparisons? It does. Could you tell the jury what your training and experience is in the area of fingerprint examination and comparison? I got involved in the fingerprint sciences when I attended the FBI Academy's uh, Science of Fingerprints course. I successfully completed that course. Um, I have since then taken numerous other uh, both basic and advanced fingerprint examination courses presented by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Crime Scene Institute of Florida, uh, as well as the International Association for Identification, of which I'm an associate member uh, under the discipline of fingerprints examiners. And how many times have you conducted fingerprint analysis and comparison? Thousands. All right. And have you ever testified as an expert in the area of fingerprint analysis and comparison? Yes. How many times? Uh, prior to today, 320 times. Judge, at this time I tender Mr. Balboni as an expert in the area of fingerprint analysis and comparison. Any board to hire? No, for Mr. Garcia. I grab one. No, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. Did you have an opportunity to conduct a fingerprint analysis and comparison in this case that we're here about today? I did. All right, I want to approach you with what's been introduced into evidence as State 78. Do you recognize State 78? I do. How do you recognize it? In the lower right-hand corner of this document has my personal notation uh, written in blue ink indicating this was the uh, specific document that I had uh, conducted a comparison on. And what type of document is that? This is a, this is a uniform uh, Florida pawnbroker's transaction form. And who does the, who purports to be buying the item in this specific? It's listed as Sigfredo Garcia. Present on the pawn? There is. Right. And did you have something to compare the pawn, the thumbprint on the pawn ticket with? I did. All right. I'm going to show you what I've marked as State Exhibit 79. Do you recognize State 79? I do. How do you recognize that? This is, the, this is a standard pre printed applicant fingerprint form. Uh, it bears my it's, uh, personal notations all over it, has my signature. My printed name, my D, uh, the date these prints were obtained, the individual's name whose fingerprints appear on them, the location that I obtained these fingerprints, uh, as well as the demographic information, the demographic information of the individual whose prints are here on. So you actually took the fingerprints contained in State 79 from the individual? I did. All right. And the, does the exhibit appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected the prints? It does. Judge, at this time I'd ask to bring the evidence state 79. Any objection? Not from Mr. Garcia. No objection. 79 will be admitted. Mr. Balboni, from whom did you collect the fingerprints and space exhibit 79? Sigfredo Garcia. And do you see that person present in the courtroom? Yes. Could you please point him out and describe what he's wearing? It's an individual with a blue shirt sitting to the right of defense counsel with glasses. Let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant, Mr. Garcia. Now, Mr. Balboni, once you collected the fingerprints from Mr. Garcia, did you make a comparison between his known fingerprints that you collected and the ones or one present on the pawn ticket? I did. Could you tell the jury about that process? I conducted what's 
referred to as a side-by-side -side comparison. In this instance, since I had two paper documents, um, merely determined, first of all, which digit appeared on the one bearing a single document. The document is actually listed as the right thumbprint of the individual uh, who conducted the pawn transaction. Um, under magnification with appropriate lighting, uh, I did a, a comparison to, for the purpose of determining whether or not that fingerprint matched the fingerprints that I had obtained from Mr. Garcia. And is it true that fingerprints are unique to each individual person? Yes, that is one of the premises of fingerprints that no two individuals are known to have ever had identical fingerprints. And what was the result of your analysis of the comparison between the print you collected from Mr. Garcia and the one on the pawn ticket? It was my determination the fingerprint on the pawn ticket matched the number one digit or the right thumbprint of the individual whose fingerprints uh, I obtained. All right, and if you could just remind us what the phone number is that's present for Mr. Garcia on the pawn ticket. The phone number? Yes, sir. It's area code 786. 372-5986. No further questions. Cross. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you. So, Government's Exhibit 78, may I approach, Judge? You may. Mr. Balboni, with regards to this document, which is already in evidence, this is the, sorry. You were, uh, you were able to obtain a fingerprint on the bottom right-hand corner of this pawn broker transaction form. Is that correct? Well, the fingerprint was already on the document. I apologize. Mm -hmm you were able to utilize the fingerprint that was already on the document to be able to compare it to the print that you took of my client, correct? That's correct. Now, the government went and asked you what the phone number was on this uh, palm broker, on this palm broker transaction form. Is that correct, sir? Yes. And you want to read that back in the record? Area code 786 Eight, six. Now, why don't we also go ahead and read into the record? I apologize. Let me ask this question first. Are you familiar with the facts of the homicide investigation in this case? Not entirely. Are you aware that the homicide took place in July? Wait, I'll go back to the podium, Mr. Stankin. You can leave a document with him if you want him to refer to it. Yes, Judge. Thank you. Investigator Bob Boney, would it sound about right based on your knowledge? And if you don't know, that's that's fine to say you don't know. That the homicide in this in this case took place in July, mid-July of 2014. Is that correct? I'm not aware of the date of this uh, the case this case. Would you go ahead and read to the members of the jury the date of the pawnbroker transaction form? It's in the top corner. That's in the top portion of it, sir. Transaction date is 10-15 of 2013. So that's October 15th, 2013? Correct. And the location of this pawnbroker shop, do you know where that is? It's listed on here as uh, 1823 Northwest 79th Street in Miami, Florida. <laughs> Did you have an occasion to travel to the actual pawnbroker location? I did not. Did you contact the pawnbroker location to see if they had surveillance video that memorialized the actions that transpired on, what was the date again, sir? 10-15 of 2013. On 10-15 of 2013? I did not. Are you aware of what the rules and regulations are within the state of Florida that require pawnbrokers to keep surveillance video? I am not. Are you aware whether or not Secreto Garcia was accompanied by anybody during this transaction? I am not aware of that.
how long did you did you indicate that you'd been a crime scene a crime scene analyst, sir? Over twenty years. The limited portion of your investigation was with regards to verifying this uh, fingerprint from the pawnbroker slip and the one and the and the uh, prints that you were able to obtain from my client. That's correct. No other investigation. Let's go side park, please. You might. During your investigation, did you inquire from this same pawnbroker if there were additional forms from uh, that were uh, filled out with re related to Secretary Garcia? I did not. During this investigation, did you inquire to see if there are any pawnbroker transaction forms filled out by Luis Rivera? I did not. And would it be safe to say that you were uh, conducting your investigation at the direction of the state attorney, correct? That's correct. I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Very briefly, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. States Exhibit 78. You were given a fingerprint of Sigfredo Garcia, right? I was provided. I obtained the fingerprints from Mr. Garcia. I personally obtained the, not on that document, but the other document. When did you take Mr. Garcia's fingerprints? I've noted that on the actual document, and it was on 618 of 2019. And how long can a fingerprint last on a, a piece of paper and re remain identifiable? Indefinitely. Right. Any follow-up, Ms. Kaplan? No, sir. Garcia. Just one second. Nothing further from Mr. Garcia, Judge. Thank you, Nothing, Your Honor. All Thank right, you. you can step down. Call your next witness, please. Judge, the state calls Lynn Harvey. This is a recall, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. Can you remind us how you are employed? Uh, I'm the director at Premier Health and Fitness Center. All right, thank you. Last week when you testified, we introduced States Exhibit 124, which contained some 
clips from the original surveillance footage collected there from Premier Jim where you're employed. Remember that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And there were some questions about the clips that were taken. Have you had an opportunity to review a thumb drive, which I've marked as States Exhibit 177? Yes, ma'am. And does that thumb drive contain fair and accurate original surveillance footage from which the clips in States 124 were taken? Yes, ma'am. And no clipping or circling has been done on the footage in States Exhibit 177? No, ma'am. Right, Judge, at this time I'd ask to move in evidence States 177. And so I'm clear, this is uh, what 120 or was a, is a, a smaller subset of one tw of this document. Correct. Okay. Any objection? Your Honor, I, I just want clarification. Is this a new piece of evidence, or this is something that's been that you've had that you've edited for today's presentation? I, I don't understand exactly what. Well, let's go, Senator. States Exhibit 177 will be admitted. And Mr. Harvey, just to clarify, this exhibit, it's a thumb drive, it contains all of the original footage relating to the events that we're here about today. Yes, ma'am. So no editing. You can watch all the cameras all the way through the entire time Mr. Markell's in the gym if you want to. Yes, ma'am. All right. And Judge, at this time, I'd ask to publish just a small portion so the jury can compare what they saw yesterday, uh, last week in States 124 to States Exhibit 177. You may. While she's doing that, Mr. Harvey, how, how long would the whole thing be? Do you have an idea? Um, several hours.
right, so Mr. Harvey, that was just an example, but all of the different camera angles which were previously shown in States Exhibit 124 are also present on 177? Yes, ma'am. All right, no further questions. Crawford. Good morning again. Good morning. You've reviewed every single clip um, and every single piece of footage on the surveillance. Is that correct? Um, I've looked at the majority of that. Okay. And when you say majority, the a majority of it, do you, does that mean that you looked at half of it, seventy-five percent of it? I'd say probably seventy-five percent of that. And would it, be, would it be a fair statement that the reason you haven't looked at all of it is because some portions of it are not relevant with regards to where we knew the locations of uh, the suspect vehicle of Mr. Mark Kelsby? Yeah, there were some that just showed, some of the uh, cameras that just showed trees, for example. Yes, sir. was not good footage, so I didn't review all of that. Do you recall there's a portion of the video at the inception where the Prius, if this is where Mr. Markell is parked, the Prius drives up and out of camera range? Do you recall that? Um, I don't. You don't. Um, do you recall there's a portion of it where the Prius drives back down and parks somewhat close to Mr. Markell's car? Do you recall that? I don't. You don't. In the footage that you saw, if the Prius was to tr take a left and drive up in the parking lot, would and will you agree with me that there's a portion of the parking lot that surveillance cameras do not see? I would agree with that. Could you describe to the members of the jury what's around that area? <clears throat> that you, the area that you cannot see? Yes, sir. Um, there's certain portions of uh, the middle uh, of where you come in. Our building faces west. Yes, sir. So there's certain portions of the middle there that you cannot see due to trees. And on the north side of the building, there are some trees there that you cannot see portions of the parking lot. Would it be correct or incorrect? to say that the areas that are out of view of the surveillance cameras don't have, uh, well, let me ask you this way. Are there other businesses or public roadways or private roadways that are, that are in the area of, of what's not captured by the surveillance videos? Yes. Okay. It's not like a secluded private area that no one can see, correct? Uh, no, it's, it's, it has trees around the perimeter of our property, um, so you can, you can see fairly well. It appears based on the surveillance that we have that in the morning time, there seems to be a substantial amount of customer traffic at your gym. Would that be a fair statement, sir? That is, yes. And would it also be a fair statement to say that it appeared that a good portion of the uh, parking spaces were taken? Yes. And would it also be a fair statement to say that given the fact that there's this is a fluid business, people are constantly coming in and going out, would that be a fair statement, sir? Yes. In your review of the surveillance videos, at any point did you see a person exit the Prius to urinate? Not that I don't recall. Would that be something that would, is that something that would have drawn your attention? Um, possibly. Well, so the reason why I'm asking is because the Prius is the target vehicle of a criminal investigation, correct? That's correct. And that investigation, uh, it's not a trespass or a DUI, it's a homicide investigation, correct? Yes. Okay. And you'll agree with me that being able to locate the appropriate suspects is obviously the goal of law enforcement and any good law-abiding citizen, correct? I would think so. That's not really where my expertise is. But uh, correct. I would think so. And so you'll also agree with me that if there is any kind of evidence 
showing one of the suspects exiting the Prius and urinating in your parking lot, that is something that would have been, that's something that you would have noticed, correct? Yes. And just to clarify, did you see this in any of the footage that you've observed? Not that I recall. And you'll agree with me that if that is something that you saw, that is something that you would have recalled, correct? Yes. And you would have obviously pointed that out to law enforcement as well, correct? Yes, at that, but at that time, I wasn't sure what we were looking for. I understand that. When we reviewed that, so. But just to clarify, no video evidence whatsoever of anybody. Well, let's not just say anybody. My client, Sigfredo Garcia, exiting the silver Prius and urinating in your parking lot, correct? Not that I recall. If I may just a minute, Your Honor. You may. Thank you for your answers. I have no further questions with this witness, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. No questions for Mr. Harvey, Your Honor. Thank you. Read, read. No, Your Honor. Any juror have a question of this witness? All right. Write your question down, please. I think you've done it to some extent, Mr. Harvey, but would you kind of just describe the layout of your business and what's around it and talk to them? I know I'm the one asking the okay. question. Right. Um, our uh, building is um, 3521 Clay Boulevard. Uh, it's a 55,000 square foot facility that sits on nine and a half acres. Our building faces the west, and uh, we have what we consider to be a, a south parking lot, um, which would be as you walk down the building to the left, and the north parking, I'm sorry, the uh, west parking lot, and then a north parking lot. 
and behind our facility we have employee parking. <coughs> um, what else? And on the uh, video that you put in, and that was put in evidence, um, number 177, are the camera, different cameras, labels in the video? Uh, yes, sir. And how would they be labeled so believe, they could know what you're talking about? I believe on the footage, it's camera one, two, three, we have 16 cameras. And I believe on the bottom of the video, it's labeled South Parking Lot, uh, West Parking Lot, maybe Northwest Parking Lot, it seems like, but then North Parking Lot. Okay. Thanks, sir. Any follow-up, Ms. Kaplan? No, Your Honor. Any follow-up from Garcia? Briefly, Judge. See? Sir, so you have 16 cameras? Yes. And are they being monitored real-time? Uh, yes, um, they're they're actually in my office, is where they're at, and there's a screen with all 16 up right there. So if you see some sort of illegal activity or an accident or a disturbance, uh, do you have a security team? Um, no, not really. Do you have somebody that will potentially drive around the parking lot? No, we have a facilities manager who actually oversees our outdoor and indoor uh, equipment uh, property for the most part. Do they have like, a, do they wear any special uh, uniform or anything? Yeah, we have, we do, but they're not security type uniforms. But they're employee are, uniforms? Yes. And uh, does this person drive around outside in like a special vehicle or a shopping cart or anything like no, that? They, they walk. They walk around? Yeah. And so if you see a disturbance on one of the cameras, you could say, go to go to area where camera six is or something of that nature, sir? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. No question here, right? Ms. Kaplan, any further? No, sir. All right, you can step down, Mr. Harvey. We'll try excusing you again. So, uh, we think we're through with Mr. Harvey. Yes, sir. Anybody need him? No, you're not. No, you're not. We'll excuse you again. All right, call your next witness, please. Officer Bill Brannon. <clears throat> Subject to my prior ruling. Yes, sir. Sir, please introduce yourself and spell your last name. I'm Officer Brannon, B R A N N O N, number 510 with the Tallahassee Police Department. How long have you been with TPD? Been with the Tallahassee Police Department for 20 years, and I was with FSU PD for a couple years prior to that. Right. Do you remember responding to a crime scene on July 18th, 2014? Yes, ma'am. And was that located on Trescott Drive? Yes. Who was there when you arrived? Uh, the paramedics were already there, and Sergeant Sims and Investigator Bradshaw. What time did you arrive? Uh, approximately 11, 15 a.m. And what was your role there on the, on the scene? Uh, I, I ended up being writing the initial report. Okay. Did you also participate in clearing the residence? Yes, ma'am. And during your clearing of the residence, did you see any evidence of a struggle or a robbery attempt? Uh, when I was approaching the scene, which was in the garage of the residence, uh, the paramedics were taking the victim out of the car. I saw bandaging around his head, blood on the victim, uh, a little bit on the ground, a little bit on the car, some shattered glass, and I also noticed a half a pair of glasses laying on the ground just outside of the driver's door. Okay, but inside the residence, any indication of forced entry or robbery? No. Okay. Did you also assist with setting up a crime scene perimeter? 
I can't remember if I actually assisted with setting it up, but I definitely was guarding the north end at one point. All right, what is a crime scene perimeter? Basically cording off an area with crime scene tape and making sure no citizens come in the uh, crime scene area. And where was the crime scene tape set up that you assisted with holding? Uh, approximately a few houses north of the victim's residence on Trescott. And would that be toward Centerville Road or the other direction? Uh, well, if you go on way around Centerville, it would have, I mean, Trescott, it would eventually hit Centerville. But it would be between the crime scene and Centerville Road? Yes. Okay. And... If you were just passing by Trescott Road on Centerville Road, would you have been able to observe the crime scene tape? From Centerville Road? Yes, sir. No. Why not? Uh, there was a considerable distance between there, and it also kind of curves around. Okay. Um, during the time that you were holding the holding the perimeter, that just means sitting there and making sure nobody comes through the tape, correct? Yes. All right. During the time that you were doing that, did you see a particular vehicle of interest pull up? Yes, a uh, mid to late 2000 Honda Odyssey van. And I show what was marked as State's Exhibit 19. This has been introduced into evidence. The, states, is the vehicle pictured in State's Exhibit 19 consistent with the vehicle that you saw approach the crime scene tape that day? Yes, ma'am. And the vehicle that approached the crime scene tape would have had to turn onto Trescott and come a considerable distance down Trescott to get to the crime scene tape where you were. Yes, ma'am. All right, and is this vehicle similar in make, model, and color as the one that you saw? Yes, ma'am. And why did this vehicle attract your attention that day? Uh, I'd already heard word from other officers that- Objection, Judge. Seriously. It's the same. All right. Do you drive a vehicle of a similar make and model to this vehicle? Yes, my wife dri primarily drives a 2006 Honda Odyssey. Were you able to see the driver of the vehicle? Uh, I was pretty sure it was a female, but I didn't get, I couldn't say conclusively. What about hair color or style? No. Tag number of the vehicle? No, I didn't, I didn't catch the tag number either. And about what time did you observe this vehicle approach the scene? It was right around noon. And could you describe how the vehicle, what happened once it pulled up? Just came up and made a three point turn and turned around and left the area. All right, and did it do so? I'm assuming other vehicles probably did the same thing during that time frame you were holding the perimeter, correct? Yes, ma'am. Because there was no ingress or egress down Trescott past that point, correct? No. All right, and the vehicle, did this vehicle turn around in any different fashion from the other ones that you observed turning around? It seemed to be a little less hesitation compared to other vehicles. What do you mean by that? Overruled. Can you describe what you mean by that? Uh, average systems would be pulling up and there's that kind of pause where I guess they're formulating a new plan like, oh, I can't go the way I was planning on going. And then, you know, kind of sit there for a second and then they'll eventually turn around and go. Uh, the way I remember it, this van, I mean, just came right up, made, made the three point turn and left. I mean, nothing crazy. It wasn't squealing tires or anything crazy like that, though. Okay. Um, would the view that this driver of the van that approached the tape have had, would that driver have had a clear view of Mr. Markell's driveway? Objection speculation. Overruled. You may answer the question. Should, should have been. And would the person driving the van have been able to observe at the time that that person pulled up that there were emergency vehicles present in the driveway of Dan Markell? It should be evident. There's plenty of emergency response vehicles and stuff on scene. Okay. We're only, like I said, approximately a few houses down. What emergency vehicles were present at the scene at the time that vehicle pulled up? Uh, there was probably approximately four or five patrol cars, the marked patrol cars, uh, at least at least one of the crime scene vehicles, which is also marked with police on it, and then some of the investigators. 
And your vehicle, was that a marked patrol vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Were you seated inside the vehicle or were you standing outside the vehicle? I was seated inside. Okay. And did this person in the van get out or attempt to interact with you at all or ask you anything? No, ma'am. And would your vehicle have been readily visible to the person in the van? Yes. I had the emergency lights activated also. No further questions. Cross. Officer Brandon, good morning. Good morning, sir. So, just so I'm clear spatially, how far from the incident location were you parked with your patrol car with the lights activated? Approximately a few houses. From where you're sitting, would it be past where the wall is, sir? That's reasonable. Okay. How much how much farther past the wall would it be? I mean that's hard to say, maybe two to three times the distance from the me to this wall. Awful question. Let me ask probably a better question as a law enforcement officer. Can you give me a feet distance about roughly how many feet it was from where the scene was to where you were parked two to three hundred feet maybe and just so I understand you your car was blocking off traffic that would have gone down Trescott is that correct yes sir and just to help me out here sir what street would vehicles be traveling down that would run into, were you, would they be traveling down Trescott or what is another street? No, on Trescott. On Trescott. And so when vehicles would come, they would have to make a three point turn to turn around? Yes, sir. Because it's a, it's a somewhat narrow road, is that a fair assessment? Just one way, one way for both locations? Yeah, an average residential. An average residential. On one lane for north and one lane for south or east or west, however it breaks down? Yes, sir. And how long were you parked at that location? How long were you um, seated inside your vehicle? I can't recall that. You said on, on direct examination you got there around 11.15. Is that about correct, sir? Somewhere right around there. How about how long did it take for you to move to that location where you were parked? Maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, because there's some things I did in between. Understandable, I'm not holding you to it. So about 30, 45 minutes, and then you go, and then you kind of block off traffic coming down Trescott, right? Yes, sir. Were you asked by any of the investigators to provide a log of any vehicles that were attempting to come down Trescott? Not a log of vehicles coming down. And by that I mean like, nobody asked you to observe which cars were coming and turning around, right? Not specifically which cars were coming and turning around now. Did you have a notepad with you in your vehicle? I always had one with me. Did you take notes of which vehicles came down Trescott and turned around? Only the one that was of concern. Okay. And you took a specific note with regards to this vehicle? It's in the report, sir. And what did you write? Basically that I'd seen a vehicle matching that of the description known to be driven by the ex-wife. So you knew, when were you told the description of the vehicle known to be driven. Let me rephrase that. Sorry, I'm, 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 uh, I'm all over the place. So you knew going in what Ms. Adelson's car looked like? At some point after arrival, I was made aware of what... What her vehicle looked like? Yes, sir. And this is before you got in your car and you posted up and, and did your job to, to create a, a perimeter, correct? 
uh, it, it may have been right beforehand or while I was sitting there that I can't recall. It's been, been a few years. Understandable. Once you saw the vehicle that you believe matched her vehicle, did you contact, get on your radio and say, hey, somebody go ahead and pull Miss, Miss, Whit, Miss Adelson over? No. At that point, did you know that she was an ex-wife? Uh, from what I've been told on scene, it appeared that there was a separation or a split or something. I couldn't have stated that conclusively at that point, though. So you get there around 11.15, you'll agree with me, that's pretty close in time to when the shooting occurred, correct? Or at least when the first 911 call went out, correct, sir? Barely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and were you there before EMS or after EMS got there? EMS was already on scene. They must have just gotten there, right? I'm not sure exactly when they got there, because like I said, when I when I was walking up the driveway, they were already pulling Mr. Uh, Markell out of the vehicle. <laughs> and between that time and the 30 or 45 minutes, somebody associated with law enforcement told you that the decedent was separated from his ex from his from his former wife. The first person to tell me that that they believe they were separated was the neighbor who had called 911. Mr. Geiger? Yes, sir. So you interviewed Mr. Geiger? Yes, sir. In addition to telling you that they were going through a divorce, did he comment on the uh, the Prius or the vehicle that he saw that he says that he saw leaving the scene. Yes. Would it be fair statement to say that he told you that that vehicle left at a high rate of speed? Yes. And that's actually something that you pro pro provided and prepared in your report. That, that same exact language, correct? Yes, sir. Something to that effect. Something to that effect. But the car, left. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead and finish, sir. Just that it, it left in an expeditious manner, seemed to be leaving quickly, something of that nature. So not that it drove slowly out of the parking lot and eased its way down the road, that it was, it was, it was moving, right? That's what I gathered from Mr. Geiger's statement. Obviously, Mr. Geiger wasn't able to identify how many people were in the vehicle, correct? No. I'm sure that's something you asked him? Yes, sir. Was there a reason? Well, let me ask you, ask it this way. If you're told that the decedent's come through a separation and you see a vehicle that matches the description of his ex-wife, Ms. Adelson, which you did, correct? Yes. Is there a reason why you guys didn't try to pull over, at least to kind of inform her as to, as to what's going on, at least to see if that's the right car? Uh, I wasn't aware of a reason to affect a traffic stop at that point, and I'm stuck on the perimeter. I can't leave that point. You have the ability to get on your radio, correct? Yes. Okay. And there's other law enforcement officers, I assume. You said there's four cars at the scene, right? Yes. Okay, there's a crime scene van there? Yes. There would be no lack of law enforcement to be able to assist you to pull this vehicle over and inform this woman that her ex-wife, I'm sorry, that her ex-husband had been shot twice in the face, correct? As far as what I knew at that point, we didn't have a reason to stop her. Uh, I was just told, you know, be on the lookout for the vehicle. And I had notified the investigator that I'd seen a vehicle matching and... You know, that was, that's all I can tell you about that part of it. They told us to keep an eye out, saw a vehicle that matched it, and I just let them know that I did see a vehicle that looked like it. Well, I mean, but you understand my question, right? Because yes. your testimony, officer, is that it appeared that this van, which had clear view of her ex-husband's house, right? Yes. Because your testimony is assuming to this jury that it was Wendy Anderson that was driving that car, right? 
I'm sorry, say that last part again. Your testimony, what you're suggesting to these jurors, is that that may have been Wendy Adelson in that maroon color in this vehicle, right? Correct. Okay. And so your testimony was also that when the car came, the person didn't stop and ask you what's going on, right? No. The person didn't get out screaming, oh my God, that's my ex-husband's house, right? No. And you would agree with me that that, that that may be considered a normal response to seeing law enforcement and crime scene and EMS and somebody that you had a relationship with, that that's their house, right? Quite possibly. So the normal response would have at least been to inquire, correct? I can't say what her normal response was because I don't know what her role exactly was. Okay, well, let me ask you this. The car in question didn't stop, right? No, sir. Okay. Didn't stop to, to inquire to you as to what's going on, right? No, sir. Didn't get out of the car? No, sir. Didn't ask you any questions? No, sir. Okay. And pretty smoothly made a three-point turn and, and drove away, right? Correct. Thank you, Officer Brandon. I have no further questions. Thank you, Madam. Yes, sir. Very briefly. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Trescott Drive, you set up crime scene tape. I'm not sure if I'm the one who actually set up the crime scene tape. I can't remember if that was me or somebody else who put it up. Now, that tape isn't just used for locations where there's been a shooting. Use it for a car accident use it for an injured bicyclist. It's common tape that you guys use to secure an area, right? Uh, if there's an, an investigation going on, not I mean, not for just any traffic crash or anything like that. Well, if you have a traffic crash and you need to protect an area because crime scene needs to come out, you would use that same tape, right? Yes. It's not specific to a shooting. No. It's, it doesn't say there was a shooting. No. It just says crime scene. It's a yellow tape that we all know. Yes, sir. So, in this situation, that tape is set up, I think you said a couple houses down? Approximately three, three, maybe four houses down, approximately. <laughs> Whoever it was inside of this van, that tape wouldn't indicate to them what was going on at whatever house something was going on at, right? No. Could have been the, the elderly gentleman that lives next door, Mr. Geiger, who could have had medical complications, right? Uh, feasibly. Um, just what I'm saying, there could have been any reason for what was going on and why the tape was up, right? Yes. I would think that a reasonable person would think that it was something relatively serious going on with the number of vehicles there and all that kind of stuff, though. But no indication exactly what was going on. No, sir. Let's talk about the vehicle now. Could have been anyone, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't say who was driving it. It looked like a female, but I couldn't... Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. You, it, when you saw it and you later identified it in your report, correct me if I'm wrong, you said that it was a mid to late 2000s, right? Yes, sir. You didn't say it was a dark red 2007. You couldn't make that identification from where you were on the scene. I described it as a darker red, but I, the description of the year was mid to late 2000s. Right. Could have been anyone in that van, right? Yes. Could have been anyone's van, right? Yes. May not have been that van. Uh, yeah, I can't say that that's the exact one, though, sir. For all we know. Could have been your wife. Uh, mine's gold, but... <laughs> Same vehicle, though. Same approximately your vehicle. All right. Let's talk about the vehicle and how it approached the scene and turned away. You have no way of knowing why the person smoothly turned away, right? No, sir. Could have been a calm day, they needed to get somewhere else, right? Plausible. Needed to get the kids to school, get to work, go to the bathroom, could have been anything, right? As far as I know. Before you testified here today, you had conversations with the state attorney's office, right? Yes. They reviewed your testimony with you? Yes. Prepared you? Uh, what do you mean by prepared? Went over the questions that they'd be asking. No, she didn't really go over the question she'd be asking. Not More than the I topics. Recall. I cut you off. 
I mean, not that I recall her asking me exactly what we'd be asking. I know we met and talked about, she was con curious about where the, the uh, perimeter was set up, a few things about it, but not specifically what was gonna be asked. Curious if you'd be able to testify that that could have been Wendy Adelson that approached a scene, right? I don't recall her asking specifically about that. Okay. You have the report that you wrote in front of you, right? Yes. You testified on direct examination that you could see that it was a woman inside of the vehicle, right? In the uh, deposition you're talking about? On direct examination. Here today, you said that you saw that it was a woman in the vehicle, right? That I believe, I said I believed it was a woman. I, I couldn't say conclusively. Please point out for me in your report where you said woman. I didn't say it in the report, but in the deposition with you a few years later, we discussed that and I brought it up that I believed it was a woman, but I couldn't say conclusively. You wrote that report right after you saw this van, right? Around that same time frame. And the point of those reports is to make sure that you accurately take down the information, correct? Yes. To help you later here testify and to help us better understand what's going on in the case, right? Yes. After you wrote that report, once the prosecution started, before that deposition, you started talking to these prosecutors, right? Before this deposition? Are you referencing something you have in front of you? I'm referencing the deposition that I had with you a few years ago. Let me do the chronology. You write the report right after you see what you see on the scene, right? Yes. The prosecution then begins, these prosecutors come onto the case, you begin talking to them, then we have the deposition. I don't remember having any contact with prosecutors between the time that I wrote the report and that time that I had the deposition with you. So I don't recall any, ever meeting with any of them during that time frame. All right, but safe to assume you write a report right after the incident, you don't say woman, right? No, sir. Now you're here in front of a jury after meet with these prosecutors, and now you're saying you saw a woman, right? No, I'm telling you, like I told you just a second ago, sir, I said I believed it was a woman, but I still can't say that. It could have been a man with longer hair. I don't know. I believed it was a woman, I, but I still can't say that conclusively. In your report, you wrote that you couldn't see the occupant, right? I said it, yeah. I said I didn't, I couldn't say anything conclusively about the occupants. So apparently your memory gets better with time. Don't know what to tell Wait, you. John, you don't need to answer. Thank you. Jury will disregard the question. It's not Mr. Dukas, that's inappropriate. Yes, Your Honor. Can we approach, Your Honor? Let me make a legal instruction to you. I don't, I don't have the exact writing in front of me. At the end of the case, I'll re repeat this to you in legal form. Uh, but essentially what the instruction says, and I now instruct you, is that no witness should be discredited for talking to the attorneys for either side. We encourage witnesses to talk to the attorneys for either side. They're free to do so and you should not discredit their testimony for talking to an attorney for either side. Further, yeah. Officer Brannon, we talked about the emergency vehicles present 
in and around the driveway of Mr. Markell. Were there any emergency vehicles in Mr. Geiger's driveway? I can't say for sure. I don't recall there being any, but... Were there any emergency vehicles in any of the driveways other than Mr. Markell's? I don't believe so. I believe they were on the street. All right, and I just want to clarify that when you observed the vehicle that you saw approach the crime scene tape, was it your responsibility for finding and interviewing Ms. Adelson, or was that the responsibility of some other officer? Somebody else. Okay, and you notified the who you thought to be the correct person of what you had seen? Yes. And did you do that immediately? It was right around that same time frame. I called him on the phone. All right, no further questions. All right, did you have a question of this witness? All right, uh, you can step down, sir. Do we need to keep him further? Anybody need him further? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said no question. All right, I'm sorry. Let me, we'll go to that part. So, from the jury, were you aware of the color of Miss Adelson's vehicle on the day of the incident? Yes, sir. And at what point in time had you been made aware of that? I can't remember exactly. It was somewhere in the point between interviewing Mr. Geiger and the point that I had ended up on the perimeter. I can't remember exactly when I'd been notified of that, though. So it was before you saw this van? Yes, sir. Okay. Any follow up, Mr. Captain? No, sir. Garcia. No, no, no. Briefly, Your Honor. Okay. Officer. Just want to get the chronology down here. You're on scene, you see the van, you learn of the color of Miss Adelson's vehicle, right? I'd already been aware of the color of her vehicle prior to seeing what I saw. And then you write your report. It was around the same, yeah, around the same time frame. Correct me if I'm wrong, you write it early evening and you submit it early evening, right? Probably earlier than evening, if you want to take a look. I mean, it doesn't have exactly what time I got done there or anything. But it wasn't verified by your superior until early evening, right? I can't tell you when they reviewed it. You could take a look at the bottom right-hand corner of the report. This, what I have, doesn't have that on there. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Well, further, Mr. Kelton. No, sir. All right. You can step down. Anybody need him further? No, Your Honor. Yeah. All right. You're excused. Thanks, sir. All right. Uh, take 15 minutes. We'll let the jury step out. Either side need anything? Not really, sir. Right. Possibly depending on what we receive next. Nothing, Your Honor. Okay. We'll take 15 minutes.